Let's go. This is Drew with Chose the Process. We're going to continue on this evening. Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins, Chapter 3.2. What's your plan? If you don't know where you're going, every road will get you nowhere. Henry Kissinger. Congratulations, you've come a long way. You've taken three huge steps toward financial freedom. You made the most important financial decision of your life. You become an investor by committing or expanding the percentage of your income that automatically goes into your freedom fund. And you've begun to build your money machine that will set you free. You've also learned how to protect yourself from the biggest lies designed to separate you from your money. Finally, you have put a price on your dreams. You know how much income it will take to be financially secure and independent. Now, you're going to take that you're going to take what you've learned about the power of compounding and put those money power principles to work. We're going to work together to create a plan for you and your family that is absolutely attainable and within reach. No matter what level of financial dream you're shooting for, security, vitality, or independence. There's one more thing before we start. If you're like most people, you hate talking about money, but hey, it's just us anyway. No one else will see these numbers unless you decide to share them. What's most important is that you be honest with yourself. No rounding up here, no bending the truth, no looking at your numbers and with a rosy lens and making your finances look a little better than they are. And by the same token, don't sandbag yourself either by making the plan so conservative that you feel like it's impossible to achieve. Just level with yourself and commit to taking a candid picture of where you are now. That's how to make this plan really work. You can play only your own hand. A good friend of mine recently had a reunion with a group of his boyhood pals near home, near my home in Palm Beach. They all gathered to celebrate their 50th birthdays. They had gone to nursery school together and lived down the street from one another throughout high school in a Levitt community of track homes on Long Island, New York. Their fathers were all professionals or owned their own businesses. Their mothers were all housewives and their household income levels tracked together closely. What struck me most about these lifelong friendships were the demographics. During their formative years, the lives of these friends were in sync, but once they went away to college, the young men splintered in different directions. One went to work for a leading financial institution on Wall Street. One became a photographer, opened a frame, opening a frame shop in Manhattan. One built homes across the mid-Atlantic states. One started a business as an importer of fine wines and craft beers. One trained as an engineer and worked on civil servant salary in South Florida. When they got together, those lifelong friends compared notes. Despite the gap in income levels and bank accounts, they were all happy. Not happy in precisely the same way, of course, but happy. Their needs were met. Many of their hopes and dreams as well. My friend shared the concepts from an early manuscript of this book with his buddies. After a few beers, the conversation turned to money, and they asked one another the same question you answered in the last chapter. How much money would it take to be financially secure to reach financial security or fund their retirements. The Wall Street, the Wall Streeter thought he had to save at least 20 million to maintain his present lifestyle without having to work. The Manhattan photographer thought 10 million would do the trick. The real estate developer thought he could manage on 5 million, especially now that his kids were out of college. The wine merchant had recently remarried. In spite of welcoming a new baby, he was counting on a nest egg of 2 million. And the civil servant, the one who'd been conditioned to live within his means and to look ahead to a steady pension for the rest of his life, thought he could live worry-free once his pension kicked in and started collecting Social Security benefits. Which one of these friends was closest to achieving his goal? Who had the right number and the right plan in place to help him get there? It's a trick question, of course. The answer isn't driven by money. You don't win the race of life by amassing the biggest pile of cash or accumulating the most things. And you don't win by grabbing a quick lead and coasting to the finish line. How do you win? You win by living on your own terms, as well as your 
as well as you fully as well as well and as fully as you can for as long as you can you create a plan that meets your needs that works for you and you stick to it that's success plain and simple if you're scrambling consistently competing with others views of success or financial independence and trying to achieve an elusive goal you're going to fall behind and become frustrated if you're chasing someone else's goal you also lose it doesn't matter how much your neighbor has what kind of car he or she drives, or the vacation he or she takes. This plan is about you and only you, and no one else. The day you stop racing is the day you win the race. Bob Marley The illusion of advantage Ever watch track and field events in Olympics? It's easy to stare at the track just before the starting gun fires and wonder how the runner positioned all the way out in front of the outer lane of the track doesn't have a huge advantage. Intellectually, we know that the, all the runners must run the same distance, but visually our eyes seem to deceive us. That so-called lead is called a stagger, and it's meant to even the distance on an oval track in a 400 meter race. There's a gap of about 6 meters separating each runner. But of course, everyone knows that there's no advantage, physically to being all the way out in front of the outside track or all the way in the back of the inside. You have to run the same distance either way. Yet, the appearance of advantage can be a powerful psychological edge. Does the guy out in front think he's got the lead? Does that give him a boost of confidence? Or perhaps take away the tiniest fraction of his drive? Does the guy all the way in the back feel like an underdog and then run just a little bit faster to compensate? Let's go back to our five friends. From the outside looking in perspective, it might feel like the civil servant is all the way in the back, lagging behind the field, and it might seem like the Wall Street executive has set himself up for a strong finish, but that's the illusion, not the reality. No one is ahead. There's no first place or last place here. Life is not a competition. Often people use money and the acquisition of things to measure where they stand. Who's got the nicer house, the fancier car? the summer home in the Hamptons. But the truth is, we can't predict how long we'll live or the state of our health as we age. The reality is, it doesn't matter where we start, it's how we finish that counts. Here it seemed that all of these lifelong friends were headed in the right direction, each on his own terms, in his own time. That's one of the reasons they felt so happy with their lives. With a little discipline and foresight, they all had a shot at winning the race they'd started together, all the way back in nursery school. The same can happen for you. It doesn't matter where you stand in relation to your friends, your family, your colleagues, or clients. All that matters is your personal journey. It's tempting to look at others as a yardstick and convince yourself that you're all the way out in front, with the appearance of a lead, or resign yourself to the back of the pack. But that's not the point. The race of life is a marathon, not a sprint. The only thing to do is to focus on the path in front of you. Look ahead, establish your own pace, keep moving forward, and then create that plan. The only person you should try to better than is the person you were yesterday. Anonymous. Your plan. Now that you know your only competition is yourself, it's time to come up with a plan and create a financial blueprint. The good news is, all you have to do is answer six questions in the It's Your Money app. Using this wealth calculator, you'll have a first version of your plan within seconds. If you haven't already downloaded the app, www.tonyrobbins.com slash master the game. The six questions are related to two areas, where you are now and what you are committed to creating going forward. The few numbers you need to answer can pull can answer you can pull from your records or perhaps off the top of your head. You may have to do a little bit of homework but most of these numbers should be close at hand and if you can't come up with them right now it's okay use a round number estimate just to get started to keep the momentum going. Using these numbers the app will build a plan tailored just for you based on variables you get to determine like how much you expect your income to grow, how much you are determined to save, and what rate of return you expect to get on your investments. You can be conservative or aggressive with your investments. 
or you can run the numbers both ways and decide on some middle ground. And the beauty here is, once you capture these numbers, the app will do all the work for you. You'll have the true blueprint for your financial future, a clear plan to follow. Choose your own adventure. The wealth calculator in the app you've just downloaded is a device I've used for more than three decades in my workshops and seminars. It's simple and flexible, and it's helped millions of people create financial plans that work for them. It's built on a series of conservative assumptions, but you're free to go and change those assumptions if you'd like. You can make them more conservative or more aggressive. You're in control, so put in numbers that fit with your lifestyle, your current reality, and your future dreams. If you don't like the picture that comes back to you, you can play with your numbers and choose a different path to financial freedom. In the rest of this section, we'll work together to get you specific steps to speed up your plan and ensure its success. The first plan you come up with is just that, your first bite of the apple. Then we're going to take it and improve upon it significantly in the pages ahead. A few things to keep in mind before we start. One of the biggest factors will be your tax rate, which is radically different for each one of us. This book is read by people all over the world, so rather than make it complex, we've decided we've made it simple. Wherever you live, in the pages ahead, you'll learn to utilize the tools in your country that give you the greatest tax efficiency. Wherever possible, you want to use tax-advantaged accounts to accumulate your wealth to generate a greater net rate of return. This calculator will then show you three potential scenarios with different annual rates of return for each plan, 4%, 5.5, and 7%. A conservative plan, a moderate plan, and an aggressive plan. These rates are after-tax rates of return. Some might find these numbers too conservative or too aggressive. Again, you can adjust them to any numbers you like. How did we get those numbers? On the high end, if you look at the standards set by the Charles Schwab organization, it will tell you an aggressive return is 10%. Our app's aggressive return is 7 Why the three-point difference? Schwab has shown over the past 40 years, from 1972 to 2012, the market has averaged 10%. But our calculator is assuming approximately 30% in taxes, which brings the number down to 7 In the United States, long-term investment rates are 20%, not 30%. So our app is being aggressive on the tax side. Also remember that if you are, if you are investing through a tax deferred vehicle like a 401k, IRA, or annuity, you are deferring taxes. So if you had a 10% return, as in Schwab example, you would continue to compound at 10% with no tax deducted until withdrawal. We are using our lower returns, 4, 5.5, and 7% to provide a buffer for mistakes or future returns failing to hit the aggressive mark you had hoped for. On the low end, or conservative side, if you look at Vanguard, it uses a 4% return after taxes, but we're looking at things a little differently. Most Americans who have money to invest do it through their 401k, IRA, or 401 Roth. What's the best option? We recommend you go with a Roth, or your country's equivalent, unless you truly are certain your taxes are going to be lower in the future. Lucky you. Governments all around the world, and especially the United States, have spent money they do not have. How are they going to pay it back? By raising taxes. So while no one knows for certain whether taxes will go up or down, my bet here is that they're going up. In a Roth, your returns are 100% yours, meaning that if you've got 7% return, you keep all 7. No cut, no cut to the tax man ever on the growth of your investments. If you get a 10% return, you keep all 10%. This is why we built the Wealth Calculator this way. It gives the flexibility to think about returns in a net after-tax approach. You design the plan with what you believe is most appropriate for your planning purposes. This Wealth Calculator is designed to quickly give you a sense of how different choices will impact you long impact how long it will take you to achieve financial security vitality and independence after you come up with a basic plan you like you can also get precision too as I mentioned earlier portfoliocheck.com has a technology platform to link all of your investment accounts it will give you immediate feedback on what your actual rate of return has been on your investments in the past 
most people have no clue. It will show your best performing years, your worst performing years, and in how many years you have taken a loss. It will also show you how much you are really paying in fees, so you'll know the true impact on your future savings. Go there, if you like, after you have your basic plan completed on the app. Of course, with the app, the numbers and your plans are completely secure and remain accessible to you wherever you go on any device. You can change your returns at any time, change how much you're willing to save, and see the impact in moments. One of the most powerful ways to accelerate the pace at which you achieve your financial goals, and the most painless way I know, is to implement the Save More Tomorrow plan which has helped over 10 million Americans grow their savings in, way they, in ways they've never thought possible. Do you remember how it works from Chapter 1.3, Tap the Power? You commit to automatically taking a percentage of any raise you receive in the future and adding that to your freedom fund. So, for example, let's say you're saving 10% of your current income toward your freedom fund. You're investing, but you want to find a way to speed up your plan. By committing to save more tomorrow plan, the next time you get a 10% raise, 3% would go towards your freedom fund and the additional 7% would be available for your improved lifestyle today. Do this three times in the next decade and you could be saving up to 19%, almost double what you are putting away today, and at no loss to you, because it's all based on additional future income. This will make a huge difference in the speed which which you can achieve your financial dreams. To take advantage of, to take advantage, just click on the Save More Money Tomorrow option in the app. One final note, I've also taken out the value of your home from the equation. Now, hold on, before you scream and yell, yes, I know, for many of you, it's the largest investment you have. If you want to add it back in, you can, but I've taken it out so you have yet another conservative cushion. Why? Because you'll always need a home to live in. I don't want you to run those numbers and generate a plan that relies on the value of your home to generate income. You may sell your home in 10 years and realize a significant gain, or you may stay in your home for the rest of your life, or you might need to downsize and take some money off the table to pay off an, an unanticipated expense. No matter what happens, your plan is des designed to keep you afloat no matter what your living situation holds. Why all these buffers built into the system? Because I want these numbers to be real for you, not just real in this moment, but real over time, against any number of real world events that could set you back. I want to soften the blow in case you veer off course, but I also want you to exceed your own expectations. Most of all, I want you to know with absolute clarity and certainty that the projections we generate together are truly within reach. Ready to dive in? Open your app. When I look into the future, it's so bright it burns my eyes. Oprah Winfrey Drum roll, please. Now, I know you're going to want to dive right in, hit enter, and sit back while the app tells you how the rest of your life will play out. But that's actually not the point. The true value of this next step is to show you what's out there, what's realistic, what's possible, what's worth dreaming and fighting for. It lets you try on different outcomes and play with some of the variables if you want to create a different picture or produce a different result. In near term, it gives you a true plan you can follow, a blueprint for your financial future. Think of it as your personal finance trainer. It takes your real numbers, your savings, your income, and calculates what they'll be worth based on a series of anticipated outcomes. Don't worry about specific investment strategies just yet. We'll cover these in section 4, but it's important to get some idea of how your money can grow once it starts to work for you. Remember, the focus is not on where or how you'll invest your money. This exercise is an opportunity to forecast, to look into the crystal ball of what's possible. What would your future look like if you could realize a 6% 6 return on your investments? How about 7 or more? How much money would you have after 10 years or 20? What if you had somehow managed to hit the jackpot and found a way to generate gains of 9 or 10%? Remember, just one of the asset allocation portfolios you will learn in Chapter 5.1 
invincible, unsinkable, unconquerable, the all-season strategy has produced an average rate of just under 10% over the last 33 years and lost money only four times. And one of those losses was only 0.03%. So there are many possibilities once you educate yourself as to how the top investors on earth conduct themselves. So play around until you find a number that feels right to you, one that you have a healthy dose of confidence in. Just a few minutes of your time and you'll know what your savings with the power of compounding at different rates of return will bring you. It is only the first step that is difficult. Marie de Vici. Shamron? I probably just butchered that. Alright, I'm going to finish this one off right now. We'll continue on with chapter 3.2 when I return. Appreciate you.